Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are back with the Chrome box, except this time we are going to hack it with this paperclip here. So we're going to pop this paperclip in. And by the way, we're hacking this to run something called Crouton, which allows you to run Ubuntu, which is a pretty much a full-blown Linux installation, side-by-side -side with Chrome OS. So there's always a way to get back uh, to Chrome uh, if you just want to reset the device and go back to where you were before. So this is a very safe way, or a relatively safe way, uh, to hack your device. Now, what you have to do first, though, is actually kill it. Um, so what you do is you put the paperclip into the side here, uh, turn on the device, and it will wipe out whatever settings you have on here. But again, because you're living in Google's cloud, uh, you're pretty safe to do this because everything is already saved if your uh, Google account is synced up properly. Now, it says here Chrome OS is missing or damaged. It's okay. Uh, what we're going to do is hit Control D on the keyboard, and that will um, basically have a confirmation to say, are you sure you want to do this? Then hit the Recovery button. And when you do that, it will uh, go ahead and reboot, and it will say OS verification is off. And actually, what you want to do uh, is leave this off, and you have to kind of let it sit uh, on this screen for a minute uh, in order to get that to work because uh, what they're trying to warn you is, is that you're not running an official Chrome operating system on here. And if somebody were to come by and boot it up, uh, they want to make sure that uh, you're not doing anything uh, you shouldn't be. So uh, we'll let it sit here for a second. And once it's ready to boot up, we will uh, continue this tutorial. All right, well, here we go. We are uh, now transitioning into developer mode. So we have to wait a little bit uh, for that warning to go away so that whoever walks up to this knows that it's not running a stock operating system. But again, you can always revert it back. And we're going to let this sit here and transition. So if we have to take another little jump cut, we will. All right, that developer mode took a little bit of time to process, but we finally got to the end of it. And it dumps you back out to uh, your Google Chrome OS uh, operating system. And I had to reload my account on there, but otherwise I'm no worse for wear. And we've got uh, now a full-blown Chrome OS installation once more. And the next thing we're going to do uh, is you want to head over to this page on GitHub called Crouton. And if you just do like a Google search for GitHub and Crouton, you'll see it. Uh, the thing you'll want to do first is click on this link right here, and that will download the script that we're going to need. And then what you want to do is just kind of scroll down because they'll give you um, a really uh, easy way. This is what this is one we're going to do, uh, the easy way to get Ubuntu on our system here. So all you got to do is just follow its directions here. So we've downloaded Crouton. Uh, we're going to pull up a command script or a command shell right now by hitting Control-Alt-T. You type in shell. And I'm just going to pop up my instructions here for the next step here. Uh, we're going to type in sudo sh dash e, and we're going to hit the tilde here and point it at that script. So downloads and crouton dash t xfce. And what that will do is execute that script. It'll give us a warning here, which is fine. And it's going to now retrieve all the Ubuntu stuff that we need to get going here. And this will take a while, but uh, it'll, it'll hopefully give us uh, some more functionality when it is done. So we'll let this run. All right, that took about another 10 minutes or so, but now it's asking for uh, some information. So we'll give it a username that we want for the primary user. So I will give it my name here, and I will type in my password and confirm it. And I didn't type it in right. I've got this really lousy USB keyboard, so it's becoming an issue. <laughs> um, but there we go. So now it's going to probably download more stuff. Now, while it's doing that, I should tell you what this is. Oh, looks like we're good to go. OK, we are done. All right, so now we're actually going to try to do something with this. So according to the instructions on the GitHub page, we are to type in uh, sudo uh, start xfce4. And here we are. We've got our Linux operating system up and running. I can right click on here and see there's a couple of applications installed. You know, it's like a file manager and some other basic stuff. Um, you can install more software. You got to go through the package manager and do all that kind of stuff. But uh, you can see there are a couple of things like there's a little audio mixer uh, program here and not everything is going to work. <laughs> so there's no sound devices installed. So um, there's still, you know, we're still a little rough around the edges here. We have to play with this a little bit more. But again, we've got uh, the ability to do more than just Chrome uh, on the Chrome box, which I think is pretty, pretty handy. Now, if you want to switch back to the Chrome OS, remember this is running at the same time as Chrome OS is running. So you hit Control Alt Shift F1 and it'll pop you right back to the Chrome OS. So you have the ability to kind of poke back and forth as you go here. I'm not going to show you too much, but this is to show you that it can run Linux applications. We've uh, installed the VLC media player 
And what I can do with this is a whole bunch of stuff that I would normally be able to do on a regular PC, including uh, browsing over to my HD home run, clicking on a channel, and actually watching a live MPEG-2 stream uh, right on my computer desktop here. So uh, pretty cool, it works fairly well. I did find it had some issues with, uh, uh, with some 1080p files that I recorded and tried to stream over my local network, but you know, I'm not expecting all that much, but as you can see, it does seem to uh, work pretty well. Um, now remember, these two things are running side by side, so if you only have two gigabytes of onboard RAM, there's going to be a limit as to what you can really do with this. But you know, if you wanna do something like maybe install a little web server or something that you wanna just run in the background on here, this is a pretty powerful little system and it should uh, be able to do that quite well. So as you can see, it's very, very easy, relatively easy to get uh, some more use out of a Chrome box than just simply running the Chrome OS. I haven't tried Windows. From what I've been reading, it's a little bit of a heavy lift to get Windows running on this device due to how its BIOS is set up and all that stuff. But uh, if anyone has a good uh, pointer for me, I'll take a look at that and maybe uh, if it's easy enough, do a follow-up video for people to see, and maybe we'll try to get uh, Windows running on the device. But I think there's some driver issues and some other stuff. So if you found something that works, uh, let me know. We'll give it a shot, and we'll try to see what else we can do with this thing. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.